In this video, I will introduce a more convenient way to determine plane stress transformation, a method called Moore's circle. Before that, let's first review the standard equation of a circle that we learned from pre-calculus. In a given x-y coordinate system, if there's a circle with the center coordinates h and k and radius of r, then the equation of this circle is given in standard form as x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals to r squared. Notice that in this equation, only x and y are variables. h, k, and r are all constants. x and y represent the x and y coordinates of any point on this circle. And this equation is derived from the distance formula or the Pythagorean theorem that the distance between any point on the circle and its center is always the same, and that distance is the radius r. Now let's come back to the general equations for planar stress transformation that we derived earlier. For the first equation, let's move this term to the left-hand side. And now let's square both equations and expand the right-hand sides. We notice that if we add these two equations together, these two terms get cancelled out. Therefore, let's add them together. And now, for any given angle, its sine value squared plus cosine value squared always equals to 1. That is the Pythagorean identity that we learned from trigonometry. Therefore, this equation simplifies to this. If you recall the standard equation of a circle, only x and y are variables. Now let's look at this equation that we just derived from the general equations, which can be written equivalently this way. And notice the similarity between this equation and the standard equation of a circle, since only these two are variables, sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy are all parameters. Therefore, by comparison, we can say that this equation represents a circle with a center at coordinates sigma x plus sigma y over 2, 0, which is the same as saying coordinates average normal stress sigma average, 0. And the radius is this term. Now we want to visualize this circle. Let's first set up the coordinate system. We use a horizontal axis to represent sigma x prime and a vertical axis to represent tau x prime y prime. Notice that this axis is especially defined to be pointing downwards. On this coordinate system, we draw a circle with center at coordinates sigma average and zero. Since the tau coordinate is zero, therefore the center of this circle falls on the sigma axis. And this distance is a sigma average, sigma x plus sigma y over 2, and the radius of this circle is this term. On this circle, we can visualize the absolute maximum in plane shear stress, which simply equals to the radius of the circle with negative here and positive here. And this point corresponds to the mathematic minimum of normal stress which equals to the average normal stress minus r, or the absolute value of the maximum in-plane shear stress. And this point represents the mathematic maximum normal stress, which equals to the average normal stress plus r. And for any point on this circle, its coordinates represent its state of stress. Therefore, this circle can be used to represent any state of stress associated with any orientation of this planar element. And as you probably guessed it, this circle is known as Mohr's circle, named after the German engineer Christian Otto Mohr. When we do stress transformation, the original normal stress and shear stress are given, and they correspond to the coordinates of this point on Mohr's circle. Therefore, this line represents the original orientation when theta equals to zero. If we want to find the new state of stress associated with the new orientation theta, then we rotate this line by angle two theta. 
Again, according to sign convention, counterclockwise rotation corresponds to positive angle, and clockwise rotation corresponds to negative angle. Now, this line intersects with the circle at this point, and the coordinates of this point are the new stresses that we need to find. Let's revisit this example problem. Again, we need to determine the new state of stress associated with the new orientation as shown, and also we need to determine the principal normal stresses as well as the maximum in-plane shear stress. But this time, we're going to solve this problem using Moore's circle. To do that, we need to first calculate the average normal stress, which equals to 15 megapascal, as well as the radius of Moore's circle, this term right here, which equals to 74.3 megapascal, which, as you probably recall, is the absolute value of the maximum in-plane shear stress. So on this coordinate system, we draw a circle with center at 15, 0. The radius of the circle is 74.3. Now, the original sigma x is negative 40, and the tau xy is negative 50. And using these two as coordinates, we find this point on the circle. And this angle can be determined through trigonometry to be 42.27 degree. Now, for the new orientation, theta equals to negative 15 degree. Therefore, we rotate this line clockwise by 30 degree. Again, clockwise rotation corresponds to negative angle. And now we need to find the coordinates of this point. To do that, let's use a reference right triangle. For this right triangle, this angle right here equals to 42.27 plus 30 degree, which is 72.27 degree. And the hypotenuse side is the radius of the circle, 74.3. Therefore, from trigonometry, we can determine the length of these two sides. Given the location of this point, we can determine that sigma x prime equals to negative 7.6 in the unit of megapascal, and tau x prime y prime equals to negative 70.8 megapascal. And these results are the same as what we got before using the general equations. From Moore's circle, we can easily determine the principal stresses as well. This point corresponds to the minimum normal stress, and this point corresponds to the maximum normal stress. We can determine the principal angle from this Moore's circle as well. Notice this counterclockwise rotation of 42.27 degree, which indicates that the principal angle equals to 1 half of positive 42.27 degree, which is 21.1 degree. From Moore's circle, we can also easily determine not only the maximum in-plane shear stress, but also its associated orientation. So these two points correspond to the absolute maximum in-plane shear stress values, negative here and positive here. And also notice this clockwise rotation of 47.73 degree, which indicates that the associated orientation theta s equals to half of that, which is negative 23.9 degree. Again, these results agreed with what we had before. Again, we can visualize our results. This shows the new state of stress associated with the new orientation of this element principal stresses and maximum in-plane shear stress and their associated orientation.